oh my goodness, this thing is a beast. And a beast in terms of weight, I mean, and weight only. This is a 2011 27 inch iMac. It has an i7, 32 gigs of RAM, Mac OS Monterey, and it has a 6970 graphics card, which is the top of the line graphics card you get in this iMac at the time. And I wanna talk about whether this would be a good buy in 2022 if you're looking for a affordable iMac and you're looking at this to try out. I wanna talk about whether or not it's worth it. And I'm gonna talk about why you shouldn't <laughs> buy this iMac because it sucks. And we're gonna see why it sucks. I'm Taylor and if you're new here, welcome to the channel. I talk about Apple products and other tech products here on the channel, so I hope you enjoy. Let's get into this iMac and talk about whether you should buy this in 2022. First, let's start off with the most obvious reason why you might consider this machine in 2022, and that is because it has a 27 inch 1440p panel. And this still looks very good to this day, and those are some respectable specs, even for monitors nowadays. This particular iMac does have more of a yellowish tint to it, which I don't really like, but that might vary depending on the quality of iMac that you're purchasing. So here, one of the big issues that I've found with this is I have a screen recording here because I was gonna record the desktop, but as you can see, it is completely corrupt in green, and that is going to be a common theme with this iMac because the video code codecs are totally screwed up with this graphics card and macOS Monterey, which is probably a reason why you shouldn't consider this if you wanna do any type of recording or graphics work. We'll get to more of that in a bit. Like I said before in the intro, this is running an i7. It has a 3.4 gigahertz i7-2600 Sandy Bridge processor in it. It has 32 gigs of 1333 megahertz DDR3. It has an AMD Radeon 6970 one gigabyte graphics card, which is pretty good. And it also has macOS Monterey version 12.3.1. And as of this video recording, the current version of Monterey is 12.4, but this is running open core to get Monterey on this machine. And I would not sure if the update to 12.4 would break anything with open core. Open core is already a little bit of a concept on this machine, so I'm just trying to keep it as stable as possible. In terms of storage, this machine has a 500 gigabyte SSD. It is the 2.5 SATA uh, hard drive that's in there. You can fit full size hard drives or you can fit SATA drives with an adapter. This particular machine has a SATA drive. And that is one of the reasons why you might consider this machine is because it has a lot of upgradability. The screen can come off and you can get access to the internals and you can switch out things like the memory, the hard drive, the graphics card even. You can update this graphics card to, I think it's like a 9800 GTX, which is pretty good. That's, that's a cool feature to have. It has like a, a little MXM graphics card that you can swap out. I have not swapped it out because I don't want to mess with any of the internals on this machine. It's pretty old and there is a chance that you could electrocute yourself and really hurt yourself upgrading this machine. So I don't recommend doing that and I haven't done it myself for that very reason. If you're thinking about using this machine purely for web browsing purposes, you might wanna consider that there is a little Wi-Fi problem. Now this problem has stemmed ever since I've had this iMac even with High Sierra and now with macOS Monterey, the Wi-Fi will sometimes drop for no apparent reason and it will still appear to be connected in the operating system's toolbar and I have to completely disable and re-enable the Wi-Fi to get it to work again. So typically what I do with this is I hardline it into the ethernet and with that, it works seamlessly. So if you're considering a good Wi-Fi iMac, be aware that that could be an issue with some iMacs because I'm experiencing it with mine. I don't have any other context to other iMacs, but I know mine has that problem. So I wanted it to mention it as a reason you shouldn't probably get this iMac in 2022. 
I mentioned that this iMac is completely specced out with an i7 and 32 gigs of RAM, so you'd probably think that it's pretty powerful, right? Well, it's not. It has a lower score than the M1 chip on the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro, and it also gets extremely hot. This iMac just heats up like right now, just idling. The back is super hot. And if I look at the temperatures here, I'm gonna open up the temperature gauge. Our highest temperature is the power supply heat sink, which I believe is right back here. That is at 71, 72, hovering between 71 and 72 degrees Celsius, which is by far the hottest component on this machine. And that's just the idle. When this thing does a lot of work, that can easily get up to 80 really fast. Getting into the graphics issues with this machine, and this is primarily an open core Mac OS Monterey thing because I wasn't experiencing this on High Sierra, but the graphics are a little glitchy. I don't think open core has really ironed out all the codecs with this graphics card because as you can see just in those regular menus here, the graphics are just kind of like spazzing out. Like what is going on here? And it happens on, and it doesn't look like it's happening on this one, but if you open up the system folders, you can really see like that discoloration. It's, it moves in and out. It's, it's really odd. And that further continues into programs like Final Cut. So when I open up Final Cut here in this computer, I am immediately hit with a Final Cut quit unexpectedly and it keeps crashing. So if you're planning on using this as like a cheap, Final Cut Pro editing machine, it's not gonna work because I haven't been able to get it to open Final Cut yet. Now, let's talk about DaVinci Resolve. I thought that because Final Cut was not working, I might as well try DaVinci Resolve. So I imported some 1080p sample footage thinking that I wanted to see how this computer would handle the 1080p sample footage. I'm opening up this project and it's immediately hit with a GPU failed image processing because of an error, error code minus 59. So I'll just bypass it and this is what you get in DaVinci Resolve is a complete graphics meltdown failure. Even the effects over here, they are all blanked out. None of the clips are even viewable and it's just, it's completely glitched out, completely unusable. So if you wanted to use this to edit videos, then you should not get the 2011 27 inch iMac for editing videos because it's just flat out not gonna work. So let's move on to some convenient things about this computer is that you can watch YouTube videos on this very nicely. It plays back at 1440p, which is this native resolution just fine. If you wanted to watch in 4K, the i7 is powerful enough to handle 4K YouTube footage when you're viewing it on YouTube, of course. And you can also use it to watch Twitch. So if you wanted to consume media with this computer, have it like in your kitchen or as like just a spare media consumption device, you could do it with this computer. The i7 can handle it, no problem. Another positive with this machine is that it actually is a pretty good coding machine. If you wanted an inexpensive machine with a good screen to actually like get some coding done, because with the macOS Monterey update, it removed all the restrictions on the software to run the latest packages that you might need to compile code. So for instance, if you wanted to run a Spring Boot application, if you wanted to write a JavaScript application, you can do that because you can get access to the latest long-term support versions of Node, uh, the non-long-term support versions of Node, you can get access to the latest JVMs, they all work on this machine because of that updated operating system. So that is a pretty big positive if you wanted an inexpensive, all-in-one, good screen computer to do some coding on. Now let's say that you wanted to get this machine to do some photo editing. Well, good news is Lightroom Classic works on this device. Like I said, it's not limited by the software. The hardware is capable of running it. So Lightroom does work. However, your experience is not gonna be a good one because it is slow. This i7-2600 just can't keep up with the latest hardware required to run Lightroom. So editing photos, importing, it's all gonna be super slow and a poor experience, but it fully works. So if you wanted to edit photos, 
you can do that right here. The photo edits, they do take a while to set in, but they do work. And so this is kind of like a, some positive, but a lot negative. You don't want to use this for photo editing. What if you wanted to do some gaming on this 2011 27-inch iMac? How would that experience be? Well, I have Minecraft loaded up here, and the experience is pretty good, actually. I'm running at the native resolution, 1440p, and yeah, it's actually pretty playable. This is kind of surprising. Let's go to a, a place where it needs to render like a big field of view. And yeah, there's like no lag at all. It's, pr it's pretty smooth. Open up options. A little stuttering here and there, but if you wanted to play Minecraft on this machine and Minecraft only probably, because I don't think any other game is gonna work really well at all on this computer with this hardware. But if you wanted to use it to play Minecraft, then you could play Minecraft on this computer. Finally, let's talk about price because price is gonna be a big factor in whether or not you're gonna get this machine. So because of the configurations that are out there, the prices vary widely. This, you can get this from anywhere between 150 and $350 for those upper tier high spec configurations. With this i7, you probably get it in around 300, 320. And should you pay $300 for this iMac? No, you, you shouldn't. Don't do it because this thing is old, it's slow, it's hot, it weighs a ton, it barely runs anything at all because of either incompatibility or the hardware is not strong enough. It's just not a good buy if you want to have a practical computer. What makes it a good buy is if you want something vintage, if you want to take a step into the past, into an old Apple design, if you wanna have a machine where you can open it up and tinker with it because all the internals are either upgradable or exposed in some way, you can really nerd out with this computer. If you want it for that, then go for it. But that's your call, I'm not gonna recommend that. If you want to do it for that, then go ahead. But as a practical computer, I'd say just skip this iMac. And that's it. We looked at the 27 inch 2011 iMac and I gave my thoughts on whether you should buy this or not. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked this video. Please leave a like, please subscribe if you want to see more content and share this with your friends so they don't buy this crappy computer. Um, you'll, you'll be an amazing friend for doing that. So share this with your friends, share this with your family. Don't let them buy this computer unless they want to nerd out on an old Apple product. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.